Chess Prodigy. Grandmaster at the age of 14 years, 11 months and 20 days. A historic 3103 performance rating. Winner of the Candidates Tournament 2018. Highest feeder rating of 2844. Third highest rated player in the history of the game of chess. Who is this genius who was unbeatable in all 12 classical time control games in the World Championship match against Magnus Carlsen? Fabiano Luigi Caruana was born on July 30th, 1992 in Miami. His chess talent was discovered in an after-school chess program and the same year he played his first tournament at the Polgar Chess Center in New York. It was clear right from the start Fabiano was a prodigy. From age 6 to 18 he was trained by national master Pandolfini Grandmaster Cher, International Master Zlotnik, Grandmaster Chernin, and Grandmaster Chukelov. He moved to Madrid, Budapest, and Switzerland to train, only to pursue one goal a professional chess career. Fourteen years. 11 months and 20 days. Caruana wins the first Saturday GM tournament in Budapest in 2007 with seven points out of nine games. He obtains his final GM norm and at the age of 14, he becomes the youngest grandmaster of both the United States and Italy, surpassing the US record set by no other than Hikaru Nakamura. But little did they know, this was only the beginning. At the age of 14, he won with a score of 9.5 out of 11 to become the youngest ever Italian champion and he would repeat this three more times in the following years. I'll play for a win, but I don't want to take too many risks. I don't want to play like today. The draw is enough. Yeah, draw would, draw would be a fair result. Yeah, do you have any nerves at the moment? No, I'm not too nervous about the game tomorrow. It's just a normal game. I'm not really thinking about the result. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Good luck. 15 years old, he had his first experience at Chorus, the legendary tournament in Wijkanzee in the Netherlands, nowadays better known as Teta Steel. In January 2008, Fabiano becomes the winner of Group C with an outstanding performance of 2,696. One year later, he gets an invitation to play in Group B of the same tournament. Going into the last round, he was tied for second and his opponent Nigel Short was in clear first. Nigel Short seemed destined to take clear first. For 47 moves, he was in total control against Fabiano Caruana. Over the next 20 moves, he first blundered away an easy win and then, to make the turnaround complete, failed to find the draw by perpetual check. A broken man, he resigned on move 67. Fabiano Caruana thus completed an amazing double, winning Group C and B in consecutive years. I had, well, a lot of bad games, um, I had a lot of bad positions, I was a bit lucky in some, but overall it worked out pretty well. One year later,
Coruana plays for the first time in Chorus A, and this time with all the Super Grandmasters at the time. Dominguez, Leko, Ivanchuk, Kayakin, Nakamura, Anand, Shirov, Kramnik, and on top of that, a Norwegian 19 year old that he would meet again in about 8 years to fight for the world title, Magnus Carlsen. And even though Fabiano, who was about 2 years younger, drew the game, it was Magnus who went on to win the event. The start of their rivalry had begun. The winner of the this year's A Group tournament is Magnus Carlsen. Give him a huge applause. The same year, in the World Blitz Championship 2010 in Moscow, Caruana met Carlsen again. But at a fast time control, there was nothing to be done against the Mozart of chess. In 2013, Fabiano Caruana had his first chance to qualify for the Candidates Tournament, an 8-player chess double-round-robin tournament to decide the opponent of Anand in the World Chess Championship 2013. But Fabiano Caruana was not qualified, while Magnus Carlsen easily got in, being the highest-rated player at the time with a staggering rating of 2,872. We start the press conference with the winner of the candidates tournament in London 2013, Magnus Carlsen. Our congratulations on your victory. And uh, my first question is, could you just expect that this game will finish like it finished today? I mean, that uh, no, I mean, I, I didn't uh, expect to lose. I never expect to lose. Uh, and uh, I, I didn't really have any expectations for the other game. I mean, that didn't make sense to me since uh, I couldn't do anything about it. So. What do you think about the, the championship which is ahead? What, what championship match? No, I think it's going to be uh, a very interesting, uh, a great event. And, uh, but it's a long time ahead, if we'll see what happens. In 2013, Magnus Carlsen, the winner of the Candidates Tournament 2013, played against Vishwanet Anand. And he managed to beat Anand with a convincing score of six and a half to three and a half. In 2013, 22 year old Carlsen became the world chess champion. In April at Shamkir Chess 2014 in Azerbaijan, Caruana finished second behind the winner, Magnus Carlsen. In June at the FIDE World Rapid Championship held in Dubai, Caruana finished second with 10.5 points out of 15 games, and again half a point behind the winner, Magnus Carlsen. Then it was time for the Stinkerfield Cup in St. Louis. This year's Sinkfield Cup is the strongest chess tournament ever. It's the strongest tournament in history. The strongest chess tournament in history. The strongest chess event in the history of the game. The biggest chess tournament of all time. What? And no one could have predicted the outcome of the tournament. The tournament started off with a bang for the youngest player in the competition, Italian Fabiano Caruana, who crushed Veselin Topolov of Bulgaria in the first round before displaying an amazing pre-game preparation against Maxime Vachy Legrav that wiped the Frenchman off the board. It was pretty hard to miss anything. Um, I mean, it was just very simple. And yeah, I'm not sure what he missed. Number two player in the world, Caruana, blitzing the field with a perfect 4-0 start. And today he crushed Levon Aronian in amazing style. 
Fabulous Fabiano, the young Italian player winning yet another game to win five in a row, something that rarely happens in chess history. He is off to an epic beginning. I couldn't have even dreamed that I would start with a perfect score. The result might not show it, but uh, all the games have been difficult. But in any case, it's a, a fantastic start. I couldn't have imagined that I would do something like this. And now it's fabulous Fabiano Caruana with a 6-0 score, blitzing the field in an epic performance, one of the greatest in chess history. He demolishes opponent today, Vasilin Topolov, with a vicious kingside attack. And after this move, Bishop takes Rook. His opponent had to resign. Fabiano showing his style like no one has seen in over 20 years. Fabiano, you're now 7-0. Do you get the feelings that your opponents are frustrated at this point? Uh, yeah, I think anyone who loses is frustrated. Um, and, yeah, probably they're a bit frustrated that they can pick a draw against me. Um, although I think they're, trying, they're playing for a win in general. So uh, we're just playing games, and uh, somehow in every game it ends up in my favor. Grandmaster Fabiano Caruana, you just won the strongest chess tournament in history. Are you going to Disney World? No, I don't think so, but I'm very happy with it. Have you ever won $100,000 in a tournament before? No, not in one tournament. Any plans for the money? Not really. He went on to draw his remaining games, and he scored a historic 8.5 out of 10. Caruana achieved a performance rating of 3,103, possibly the best tournament result in history. Beating out Magnus Carlsen in the 2009 Nanjing Pearl Spring Tournament, and Anatoly Karpov in the 1994 Linares Chess Tournament. It was time again to qualify for the candidates tournament. The runner-up of the World Chess Championship 2012 qualified directly and Fabiano would have to be one of the top two finishers in the Chess World Cup 2015, one of the top two finishers in the FIDE Grand Prix 2014-2015, or one of the two highest rated players. Fabiano played the FIDE Grand Prix, which consisted of four stages, a tournament in Baku, Tashkent, Tbilisi, and County Mansisk. Fabiano Caruana was in great form. He won in Baku and ended third in County Mansisk. In the overall standings, he ended on the top spot, together with Hikaru Nakamura, who was second. Fabiano Caruana was finally qualified for the 2016 Candidates Tournament. But first, it was time for the 2016 Tata Steel Chess Tournament. Caruana played amazingly well and defeated Michael Adams, Wei Yi, Luke Van Weyli, Pavel Alyanov and Ding Le Run. Throughout this tournament, he gained 7 rating points and moved to the 3rd place on the rating ladder. In the final rankings, he ended on the 2nd place. And 1st place was, well, you guessed it, Magnus Carlsen. By March, Caruana participated for the very first time in the candidates tournament. The tournament was held in Moscow and the lineup of the tournament included Vishwana Tananand, Hikaru Nakamura, Sergei Karyakin, Peter Svidler, Veselin Topalov, Anish Giri, and Levon Aronian. Fabiano drew against his first seven opponents and in the eighth round, he won against Nakamura. Fabiano drew his ninth game, but won his game against ex-world champion Vichy Anand. And after two more draws, it was time for the final round. Caruana had black against Sergei Karyakin in a winner-takes-all game. The position was complex and for a while it was not clear who was attacking and who was defending until Caruana blundered. He understood it immediately and in an attempt to undo his error he offered a draw to Karyakin. Karyakin understood that there was something fishy going on. He refuted Fabiano's mistake and went on to win the game. Caruana was as close as he possibly could have been to challenge Carlsen, but he messed up in the very end. But as we all know, this was not the end of the story. Caruana began the year rated 2827 ranked number two in the world behind Carlsen. However, his rating would slip 
in the coming months. The Tradewise Gibraltar Chess Festival, the US Championships, the Grand K Chess Classic and the Norway Chess event didn't go well and Fabiano struggled to keep his 2800 rating. The Sinkefield Cup was the last straw. In the last round, Peters Fiddler knocked Fabi's rating below 2800 for the first time since April 2016. But Caruana wanted to qualify for the candidates tournament and so he played the World Cup. But he was eliminated in the tie breaks of the third round and he missed his chance. Nor was he able to qualify via the Fide Grand Prix. There was only one way left of doing it. He needed to get up his rating. The World Cup tightened the race between Fabiano Caruana, Wesley So and Vladimir Kramnik for the two rating qualification spots to the 2018 Candidates Tournament to within a few points. In order to get up their rating, both Caruana and Kramnik were playing in the Isle of Man Open. With the white pieces, Caruana defeated Kramnik to put himself and Wesley So in a good position to qualify for the candidates tournament. But in the end, it made little difference. Kremnik ended up receiving a wild card into the candidates event. And again, Fabiano Caruana was qualified for the candidates tournament 2018. After three rounds, it was clear that Kremnik, Caruana and Mamejarov were the main contenders to win the tournament. Vladimir Kramnik played brilliantly and he managed to win two of the three games to lead the tournament with two and a half out of three. Karwana and Mamejarov closely followed the leader with two points out of three. However, Kramnik started playing too optimistically and this led to him losing tough games. In round four, Kramnik lost to Karwana and on top of that, the ex-world champion was defeated by Mamejarov in round 6. After the 7th round, Caruana was leading the tournament by half a point to Mamejarov. Fabiano and Chakriar played very consistently and in the next 4 rounds both players drew all of their games with only 3 games left to be played. It was time for round 12. Caruana played Karyakin, the winner of the tournament 2 years before against whom Caruana had lost in the last round to take his place against Carlsen. The two leaders, Caruana and Mamejarov, each lost for the first time. Caruana to Karyakin and Mamejarov to Ding. And this left five players in contention with only two rounds to go. Karyakin and Caruana were tied for first, but Karyakin had the better tie breaks because of his win against Caruana, Mamejarov, Grishchuk and Ding followed closely by just half a point. Caruana was under huge pressure to win this round. He had to score better than Karyakin not to lose on tie breaks. And he did. Caruana won the round against Aronian with the white pieces. And so did Mamejarov. He won against Grishchuk. And the best news for Caruana was that Karyakin had drawn his game which gave Caruana a half a point lead over both Mamedyarov and Karyakin going into the last round. But it was far from over yet. Caruana had worse tie breaks than Mamedyarov and Karyakin. He had to finish ahead of both of them to win the tournament. Also, Ding Leren had a mathematical chance to win on tie breaks if all the results went his way. In the last round, Karyakin pressed hard for a win with White against Ding, but after a blunder, he had to scramble for a draw. Mamejarov managed to get a complicated game with Black against Kramnik, but couldn't get enough winning chances and also drew the game. This was amazing news for Caruana, who was still playing at the time both results were known. Fabiano only needed the draw to win the tournament. He obtained a strong position with Black against Krishchuk and even though he only needed a draw, he kept playing and converted it into a win. Fabiano Caruana became the candidate.
A few months before the World Championship match, Caruana competed in the 5th Grand KHS Classic. He won the event with a score of 6.5 out of 9, a point ahead of runner-up Magnus Carlsen. He went on to win the 6th edition of Norway Chess, finishing clear first with a score of 5 out of 8, despite having lost to Carlsen in the first round. One month later, Caruana won the 6th Sinkerfield Cup with Carlsen and Aronian. Fabiano Caruana was ready for the World Championship. Round 1 was a great opportunity for Carlsen to take the lead right from the start, but he missed several opportunities in the middle game. The game lasted for 7 hours, but Carlsen couldn't make it work. Fabiano was lucky. To draw the game. The following rounds were solid and both of them were never in great danger of losing their games. In round 6, Caruana had his first clear chance to win his game. An unbelievable mate in 30 moves could have been played after a slight error by Carlsen in the end game. But after the game, Gary Kasparov wrote that the variation was way too subtle that no human could have found it. After another draw in round 7, Fabiano felt that it was time to put Carlsen under more pressure. He traded the solid Rosalimo in for the sharp open Sicilian. In the game, Fabiano sacrificed the pawn to open up the position and according to engine analysis, Fabiano was clearly winning for a second time in the tournament. But Caruana played the dynamic position too slowly. And Carlsen made use of his inaccuracies and the game ended in a draw. Three more rounds were drawn without many chances for either side. There were only two rounds left to be played. And then this happened. Caruana's preparation was leaked. It was accidentally uploaded to YouTube. And it gets even worse. Because the footage covered many lines in Caruana's preparation, including a specific variation in the Petrov's defense, starting from move 9, knight to f6. And believe it or not, the exact variation was played. However, Carlsen was not able to get any opening advantage and the game was eventually drawn. Now, it was time for the last round. Caruana with the white pieces played the open Sicilian for the third time in the tournament. And he knew very well that he had to win this game because a tiebreak scenario would definitely favor Carlsen, who had proved to be better than Fabiano in faster time controls, being the world champion in both Blitz and Rapid. Carlsen deviated as soon as move 6 and in the middle game Carlsen had the better understanding and created a long-lasting and risk-free advantage. However, Carlsen offered the draw, confident that he would finish Fabiano off in the tiebreaks. And Caruana had to accept this offer. He had no winning chances whatsoever. It was time for tiebreaks. Although the rating gap between Carlsen and Caruana in classical chess was a mere 3 points, in rapid chess it was 91 points. It was clear who was the underdog. And not only this, a random drawing determined that Carlsen would play white in the first tiebreak game, which would give him a slight advantage since he would have the first chance to strike. In the opening, Carlsen offered Caruana a pawn for positional compensation, and Magnus eventually won the pawn back with a better position. And even though the position was only slightly better for Carlsen, Caruana collapsed under time pressure. He made a blunder on move 37. Magnus Carlsen won the first game. Caruana, now with the white pieces, struck back with a sharp open Sicilian. But in a complex middle game, Carlsen correctly evaluated the position and he avoided the danger. Caruana lost his cool and started blundering once again. Magnus took over the play and won, with only two games left to be played. Fabiano had to win twice in a row in order to tie Carlsen, but practically speaking, everyone knew at that point it was all over for Caruana. Carlsen knew he only needed a draw in order to win the whole thing. 
And in the game, Corona had to avoid all the simplifications in the position since Carlsen only needed to draw to win. This became too much for Fabi and in an attempt to keep the game complex, which was against the nature of the position, Caruana had to resign. Game over. And however the story had gone, it had been shown that he could compete on the same level with the best chess player of all time, Mozart of chess. So remember his name. Fabiano Luigi Caruana. The Machine.